Hello everyone, it's me Jessica and welcome back to another crafting creation process video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my Ronnie the Witch cosplay from Elden Ring. Elden Ring and Elden Lords. You've spent countless hours on bosses that are off the side or main quests entirely that are not imperative to any progression at all, simply to attain the status of Giga Chad, Lord of All Roots. <laughs> I absolutely love Elden Ring. It is a fantastic game if you have not tried it. Ronnie the Witch is a character in Elden Ring that you can enter into service with. Obviously, like all of my costume and cosplay endeavors, it was love at first sight when I saw Ronnie. Big hat, many arm, blue. I was down bad very quickly. I love all of the Souls games, except you. <gasps> So I figured this was the perfect chance for me to finally, finally the step into cosplaying some characters from these amazing games. Heed my words. This shall not be the only Elden Ring cosplay you see from me. I will be splitting this video into two parts since it is a lot and I want to make sure that you're getting like the full so you know what to do fully with making this because I, I want to see you make it. I want to see more Ronnies in the world. Hell yeah, more Ronnies the better. So go ahead and hit a little subscribe or a like or a little bell to kind of get notified for the next video. If you are new here, hello, please enjoy this cosplay creation process. If you are maidenless and instead want to try finger but whole, you can check out my only fingers. I have my own mental timer of how long I can work on a project before completely abandoning it altogether for something else. That is usually about one to two weeks. One, this is for my own sanity. And two, I usually find some neat little tricks and tips for time crunch, con crunch that I usually end up applying to what I'm doing. I also tend to feel a lot less guilty about a costume and the mistakes that may present themselves on the costume because I'm like, I made that shit in two weeks. Who fucking cares? So, self-care. Emmy asked me to come help judge her cosplay contest. Please go follow Emmy and check out her cosplay contest. I think she's also going to be hosting some more. So if you're a cosplayer watching this and you want to enter a little online Twitch cosplay contest, go check out Emmy. She's wonderful. Oh my God. Since Emmy asked me to help out. I kind of wanted to bring my A game because I wanted to be like, I know what I'm talking about. I'm here. I'm, I'm able to judge. Technically, I've been doing it now since 2009. I wanted to make something that was both visually cool, constructively complicated, and Twitch friendly. With all that, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go, Tarnish! First up, we're gonna tackle the robe, which is literally just that, it's a robe. The witch Rani is constantly in snuggle cute sleepy time mode, so heck, that's what we're gonna use as the pattern. Rani knows what's up, that's why she's best girl. Let us go together. I don't think they realized how hard people were gonna simp for Rani. <laughs> took a robe I already had and essentially patterned Ronnie's robe off of that. Super simple. I was able to knock this out in like a day because it's literally just sewing together six or seven pieces of fabric. One back piece, two front flaps, two arms, a collar, and a waist tube. This costume is more fabric I've worn in like all of the years I've cosplayed combined. <laughs> Make sure when you're making this robe, you adjust for the length of your arms, the length of your legs, and then finally, you want to make the arms flare out and the armpits have enough space for two sets of arms to comfortably poke through. You can use a robe as a base pattern, but you are going to have to make adjustments, so just remember that when you're doing it. There are also so many easily accessible and free robe patterns you can get online if you don't have a pattern to pattern pattern pattern, a robe to pattern off of. I ended up using this heavy, heavy, I ended up using this heavy curtain style fabric to give it some more texture and dimension. I lined only the inside of the arms with a lightweight cotton. I didn't line any of the rest of the costume because I live in Arizona and I know the laws of flesh and sweat and the bounds they hold upon me in my mortal realm. <laughs> me no like sweat in cosplay. For the wrap around the waist, just take a long thin piece of your fabric, fold it in half, sew it, flip it inside out, and then iron it. Make sure to iron everything you do go as well, it'll make it look so much nicer in the final stages and be a lot easier to sew everything together evenly. Not ironing your cosplay is some real maidenless behavior. Because we are in the lands between, you are going to want to give your doll's cloak a little filthy once over with some paint and airbrush. Nothing is clean here. It is filthy with the tears of your multiple failed attempts at Melania and swamps. Swamps everywhere. People don't have time to do laundry. Oh, I just thought of Blight doing Ronnie's laundry. <laughs> Only pain is permitted here. When airbrushing clothes, imagine where the dirt would naturally settle. The creases, cracks, and seams, hems, and cuffs are usually where I dirty things up. Next is Ronnie's fur shrug. I pre-dyed some texture fabric that I thought fit the reference a little bit more, and then I rolled up some batting into a long cylindrical tube. I then just laid the batting onto the fabric and rolled and rolled and rolled, gluing as I went. 
I imagine this is technically the edge of the fur cloak rolled up on the edges and then the little straps are there to kind of hold it in place. Sometimes doing something exactly like the reference can be difficult, so building weird little separate parts and building it together after worked so much better. We want to simulate those crisscross straps on this tube. Take some long thin pieces of tan fabric, the more tattered and weathered the better, then just take your time crisscrossing it down the tube. I just use glue to tack it down, or you can hand stitch it into place. It will take longer, but it will resist the sands of time. I also took the time to loop stitch some wire into the tube as well, so that when I actually sewed it to the cloak, I would have be able to have a little bit more possibility. I can't speak right now. <laughs> hey, Kaido. Ah. Well met. Speak. Speak. Good job. Hard to work for it, but it's done. Good boy. I owe you one, I reckon. Yeah. See ya! <laughs> I found about four yards of this fur and laid it out in my kitchen so I could cut a weird half circle. You want to cut it in the shape of a cape. Use a blade and cut the back so you don't have to worry about extra fur fluff cuts. This is a serious life hack and if you aren't using it right now, what are you doing with your life? How do you know what's good for me? That's my opinion! This is more the shape up in the top corner of what I ended up with there because you want it to line the entirety of her little cloak. Dye your fur around the top part of your cloak and let the dye soak down and drip into it. You want to make this thing look haggard to heck oh my god this is very much the outer shell to ronnie's outfit and as you can all assume it takes the majority of the environmental abuse so make it look like it once it was all dried out i used my craft brush and brushed out the fur a bit and then finally hit it with my favorite product in the world and that is that ritz spray spray dye stuff you don't have to use this you can airbrush <clears throat> it's time to attach the log tubey thing i just plopped down on the floor and hand stitched them all the way down and i wonder every day why my back hurts it took a while, but with a good leather needle, you can plow right through all that tough fabric easily. Oh my god, is that a fake nerd hoodie? Wow. FakeNerd.com. You wanna help off? That's enough chit chat for now. Okay, okay, up up. Okay. Show him just how sharp my teeth are. Oh, don't eat that. I jest. <laughs> go over there. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Good boy. On the day of the shoot, I actually just safety pinned this to my shoulders of my robe <gasps> and my little underdress. I'm obsessed with this cloak. Ronnie's got comfy grandma vibes and I am here for it. Because of the shape of the cloak and the wire, it should just lay snugly on your shoulders. Look at that one singular string. Fuck. For the underdress, I had this weird like Victorian child dress that was weirdly perfect. I can't even remember why I bought this. I had this dress already, so I cut it up like crazy. I trimmed off the collar, replaced the buttons with ties, took it in the sides, dyed and weathered it so it would look more like Ronnie's vibe. It was way too short, so I ended up cutting off the arms, seeing as I wasn't going to need those, and then added the fabric from the arms to the bottom of the dress to make it longer. If you want to make your own, I'll pop some patterns down below, but if you have something already and need an opportunity to recycle something, please do. Oh my god, you recycled your cosplay stuff? God, you used something that you've been hoarding for years, finally for a project, and you didn't spend any money or contribute to the vast waste that's inhabiting our entire planet? You must have the biggest sense of environmental justice. And probably a huge dude. Oh -ho! Please recycle your stuff. I'm a big fan of that. The arms! My approach to making costumes is making sure that you have a ton of different resources, tutorials, videos. You've consumed it all before you actually tackle the project. That way you can kind of like coat and saturate your brain. So when you come to a problem, you can refer back to help you kind of tackle that and go forward with the easiest way. At this point, I've made two costumes with two extra arms. My moth and then my Arendi from Battleborn. My moth arms were pool noodles covered with black sock and then some little armature wire batting and if you actually look at the fingers on my moth, it's very cursed because I did it really quickly. It was incredibly light. All I had was one string of fishing line from my arm to my other arm so I could do all that stuff right there that you're looking at. My Arendi costume is kind of similar, but I did a little bit more carving with EVA foam for the actual arm pieces. So there wasn't much posability, but they looked really good and they looked a lot more like my actual arm. Again though, they were very light because they were with EVA foam and the little armature and little armature like wire fingers. So all that needed again was just a little bit of fishing line to hold them up. For these arms, I measured out my arm and then made some little EVA base bones out of EVA foam. You want to make the length of your arm just a touch shorter than your actual arm. So when they hang from your armpit, they end up looking even and not super long, like a necromorph from Dead Space or something. I made two EVA bases and then added small eyelet screws to act as the joints of the arms. For this round of arms, I wanted some really good mobility and posability. So I figured breaking up the arm to joints would help that. Once I had the screw 
otherwise end, I rolled the EVA bones up in some batting. This would act as a squishy arm once I put the gloves over top. I wanted to make them look as close to my real arms as possible. To connect the arms together, I made a loose loop with some wires so they would still be able to move about. Imagine all the dirty things the Tarnished and Ronnie are able to do, like hand holding. <laughs> For the hands, I did a quick search online and I found a lot of different options. <laughs> I found these cursed as fuck silicone hands. These are incredibly poseable and gross. 10 out of 10. I just plopped and glued another screw eye into the base and then attached what was the wrist to my batting arm. These ended up being a bit heavy, so I used some additional wire that I pierced through the silicone flesh to add stability. Disgusting. I will have bad dreams about this, and not the kinky kind. <laughs> another option you could use are those little wooden hands that people use for sketching. To cover the fake arms, I bought two pairs of large We Love Color arm socks in the color baby blue. I bought two pairs, one for my arms and then one for the additional pair. Cut approves. Shove that curse as fuck. Oh, it's so gross. You're gonna take, take your time to shove that into the sock. Kato's gonna come help you. Well, I think it's worth investigating. Hopefully with the amount of batting that you did, it will compress down and feel like a real arm once it's in that sock. And once you're done, you had to do it to him. Yeah! Once I had secured the covers over the arms, it was time to airbrush and weather the doll's limbs. Heavily airbrush the elbows and wrists and any connecting joint spots. You want to make it look weathered and worn out like crazy. For she has been alive since the age of stars and this balls d This balls. Ronnie balls. Ronnie mentions that this body of hers is really hard to move, so you almost want to kind of replicate that and kind of translate that through the airbrushing and the detailing of your arms. For your actual arm gloves, just put them on yourself or someone else and do your best to airbrush while they're on, making sure to wait till they are dry before pulling them off. Four hands, two to work the shaft, one to cut my balls, one to finger my ass, always. Look how great this looks. Once you have everything weathered and airbrushed, it's time to sort out how to attach the arms. I just did a loop of elastic and then attached the end of the gloves to the elastic. Easy mode, I feel like these, these are so cute. I now want multiple pairs of arms. That's something. Would you rather have multiple pairs of arms or like, horns or a tail? Leave a comment down below. To simulate the ropes that are popping out from under Ronnie's doll skin, I cut some small holes in the fabric and used hot glue enforcer of bonding. to glue some jute cord into place. Because these were permanent prop arms, I was okay with just glopping glue into this. Just cut short little pieces of some rope and twine in a couple different widths and place them across the airbrush creases you made. This will hopefully make it look like the limbs you've made are floating. Do your best to make them loose so that you can still pose and adjust those hands without them ripping out. Now, because these arms weren't cursed enough and I wanted to make them look as real as possible, I went ahead and gave Ronnie a little Ronnie Petty Manny pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I would be doing everyone a disservice with this cosplay if I did not spend all of the extra time and details on fingers, especially because fingers are such a huge part of this game. Why am I attracted to this? Hmm. That kink discovery not only makes a lot of sense for me, but seems like a problem for tomorrow, Jess, in her further deep dives into her deeper monster banging self analysis sessions. Look how cute these arms are! Shoes or little boots. Ronnie has these little wrapped doll feeties, so I took some existing boots that I hadn't used in a hot minute and made secret little yeehaws. Just take a lot of strips of some tattered and worn fabric or twine and just wrap them around the boots. That way you can slip on your feet without having to wrap your tooties every time. <laughs> <laughs> I got these boots at the Goodwill years ago, so just another example of reusing old stuff that you've got laying around. If you don't want to use this tattered fabric, you can also use jute cord to make it look a lot more like her actual feet. Wig! Again, I wanted to use a wig I already had on deck because reuse your stuff. So I just took my white witch queen and succubus wig I wore for my shoot with Amaranth and then just dyed it blue. Because a wig is synthetic, you're gonna to want to use the synthetic blue rip dye. I love using this because it ends up making the wig look really like scronkly. <laughs> Using the tulip color shot spray, I dyed the the the, the <laughs> dyed the roots of the wig darker so that it would have a gradient, and then I used curlers with some Cotsby glued hairspray to make it stay to give it a little bit more of a of a shape. So I went from this to this. <laughs> We're gonna talk about the makeup now. To simulate Ronnie's porcelain skin-like texture, we're gonna use some Ben Nye cream-based spirit blue paint. I find cream-based stuff works best for me. I like water-activated stuff, but I really feel like I can't get a good even distribution the way that I can with this cream-based stuff. I just used some uh, liquid eyeliner for all the details and the cracks and breaks in her throat and face. I loved it. I thought it looked so good. I thought it really translated well.
reaching the great beyond. Good job! Thank you so much for watching. If you guys don't know, these videos are genuinely very just... Uh, delicious, apparently. Cathartic for me as a creator and a crafter. Making these videos for you guys to be able to like make your own costumes is just sheer joy. What is the point of life if not to be in the service of others? To create so that others may also create in your way. I think that's the reason we're alive, is to just help other people. If you watch this and can find any relief in the cosplay creation process, and you can make a Ronnie cosplay, or even another costume with the same kind of techniques, I'm happy, I've done my job, hell yeah. Let's go, Earth. I personally make my money from being a little plow on the side. These videos are genuinely just because I like making them and they're really fun. Make sure to stay after the video. I've included a ton of other cosplayers who have done Soulsborne costumes or Elden Ring costumes. So please stay and check those after if you want to. Enrich your mind. Follow more people. That is the point of life is to share it. Comment what's the meaning of life down below. really quick fake nerd is now officially at hot topic please go check out your local hot topic and grab some fake nerd merch i'm so proud of ryan 